Hey, Soul Survivors, we're going to talk about the future faking and why it is so devastating. If you are with a married person, a lot of times the mistress is, or mister, there's only like a 6% chance that it's going to work out. So just keep that in mind. A lot of times that is a reminder of the shameful things that the narcissist did while they were married. So they're going to discard, find a new supply, only 6% chance of it working out. So just keep that in mind. But the narcissist will often promise things like they're leaving their spouse or they want to be with you. They're not intimate with their spouse, that they sleep in different areas of the house. And a lot of times when somebody is in a relationship, not every breakup is due to a narcissist. Sometimes people do have second thoughts on things that... They realize maybe the goals aren't the same. A lot of people rush into relationships. So it's really important to invest with somebody else in this, to set your boundaries so it weeds itself out. Everything works out when you take your time, get to know the people, get to know if it's meant to be. But a narcissist gets so quickly into a relationship. Sometimes we fall into it because of the love bombing stage. And the narcissist, as far as a breakup is different, the narcissist will continue after they've decided that maybe it's not meant to be, or they're not getting their needs met. Uh, often their needs are one-sided. If they would give as much as they take, it wouldn't be so painful and it would all work out. It could be beautiful, but they just take and take and take till you're drained, confused with the lies and manipulation that goes on. You have an altered state of reality. You've tried everything you can. In a regular breakup, you acknowledge each other. You discuss it. You possibly apologize or state your reasons why it's not quite working out, but you at least have some compassion and you have truth to it. It's not working out because of this. I care about you. I'm not in love with you. I thought I was, whatever the situation is. But a narcissist, they continue the relationship as long as they're getting their supply. And a lot of times they don't want to give up what you've offered, whether it's extra birthday gifts or maybe uh, sexual favors or just some intimacy here and there. Also, the thrill of the chase, getting away with something. And even if it wasn't with somebody in a, uh, marriage that was possibly getting divorced a lot of times you know they can have separate lives to where they continue relationships with two three four five people and you have no clue about it because they will come up with excuses that you as an empath empathetic person you're gonna sometimes buy into the things that they say they're really good at the lies that they have sometimes they're not sometimes it's so off kilter, but you try to give them the benefit of the doubt. You try to trust them. So you're not going through their phone. You're not uh, stalking them. You're just trying to have a trusting relationship. So regular relationship, there's the, the communication. The narcissist doesn't like to communicate. The only communication they will give when it's in that discard phase is what can I still get from this relationship? If they get found out, they're still going to lie. They're not going to take accountability. If it gets too uh, like heated, not necessarily in an anger, but the pressure is on them that they will ghost you. They will go silent and they will just disappear. They won't tell you what is going on. So sometimes you might start to freak out. You try to communicate. You're, you're kind of blowing their phone up. Once you do that, they're like, yeah, that person's crazy. They're blowing my phone up. I obviously don't want them. I haven't responded to them. So when somebody doesn't give you the time of day, don't keep giving them the time of day. Give people time to miss you. If it's a narcissist, you're going to start to see it unravel. And the future faking that they can do is whether it's promising you a job, promising you they'll pay you back, everything is in the future that they don't necessarily even mean it and it can cause you to sell all your belongings thinking that you're getting married to them they can take great steps in these uh lies i had one of mine um 
had like divorce papers and you have to really be on it. You have to know what's going on. I was in law school before I knew that uh, also custody battles and over the same kid four over the same kid. Um, but there was no docket number on, on it. So sometimes they try to fool you and you have to, sorry, I got an eyelash on my eye. Um, you have to be on top of it. And when something doesn't feel quite, quite right, or something doesn't look right, that you follow your gut and question when things don't seem right. So if you are in a loving relationship, there should be good communication. And it gets confusing because the narcissist a lot of times says everything you want to hear. I love you. You're the only one for me. I'm so thankful for you. Uh, I can't imagine myself with anybody else. You're my soulmate. And they do the love bombing that it feels real. But once you start having needs or you start questioning, something doesn't seem right. Or this is taking longer than you said it would. And you might start getting anxious because they will often cancel plans or not call you back when they said that they would. And something just seems off. They don't hold their word. And sometimes they will, but that's that narcissistic cycle of the love bombing, devaluation and discard. And uh, a discard can be temporary. A lot of uh, narcissistic relationships, there's like seven breakups before it's completely done. That there's that back and forth that they have, we have that trauma bond and it does kind of make us act a little crazy. Then we start questioning ourselves. Why are we acting this way? Was it my fault? And we had the reactive abuse. And then we start feeling guilty for that, for acting out of character. And that's different than a regular breakup. In a regular breakup, it might break your heart, but you kind of understand it. Their reasoning makes sense. And it might not be what you want to hear, but it's heartfelt. It's truthful. A lot of times there's a hug at the end. Instead of, you know, keeping you on the line. And if it's a marriage to a narcissist, that they'll start to devalue you. And you start to kind of feel that things are falling apart. So you try to make it better. And when you try to make it better, the narcissist makes it worse. They see you as a weak person. And the narcissist has to go through this type of cycle that always ends in abandonment. And it's their comfort level because they feel that they were abandoned in some way in their childhood, whether it was emotionally or uh, showing up for the child, uh, whether it's giving them hugs or taking them to sports or, you know, reading their report card and, and at least talking to them, praising them or saying, hey, let's get back on track and encouraging them that what's comfortable to them is toxicity. So they go along for a while in what seems to be healthy, but they do that because they want what they don't want. Just like somebody who wants to be famous and then they realize, whoa, this is not my cup of tea. So the narcissist in a healthy relationship tries to stir it up. They need that chaos. It calms their brain when it's chaotic because it's home. When they're uh, outside of this comfort level, their anxiety eventually starts to build up. The reality sits in and they will take it out on you. When you are happy, the narcissist isn't happy. Misery loves company. So they're going to bring you down to their level. You are going to fight like crazy to keep it happy. They don't want you happy. In the beginning, you guys mir mirror you. The narcissist will always like what you like or... um try to be on the same page as you. They encourage you. They know how to lure you in. But then it takes work. It takes compromise. They don't want to compromise. 
So with the ghosting and silent treatment and everything that goes on in a narcissistic relationship, it starts to destroy you. You can start having physical ailments. Those can lead to severe physical issues. So now you don't feel good and your health is failing and the narcissist isn't going to stick by you. They're going to resent you for getting sick. A lot of times they will leave if something traumatic or uh, like cancer, things like that, a uh, heart attack where you need maybe a little extra care. They don't want that. They want a perfect relationship where you don't nag, where you don't try to work things out. And that's, that's where it's really painful is there's two people in the relationship, but the narcissist has to control things. They get jealous. So they try to start isolating you. They control the finances. A lot of times they hide finances so they can financially ruin you. If you guys are in a relationship together, sharing finances. Also, sometimes too, they might say they want you to quit your job, that they'll take care of you. They want to do that, not necessarily to support you, but to keep you trapped. And every narcissist is different, but not every breakup is because of a narcissist. But the way the narcissist handles breakups is sometimes it's an unspoken breakup. They just ghost you. Sometimes it's an unspoken breakup, but they still see you. They still try to get things out of you, whether it's sex, money, uh, watching the, their kids. And you think it's a relationship because of the way they hide the truth. And eventually it starts eating at you. So these are red flags. And a lot of us, you know, we have to start picking up on red flags. If somebody's like, yeah, you know, I, I like to have fun. It kind of, you know, sometimes it feels like I have a drinking problem, but you know, I'm just going out with the girls that when they start talking that way, that we pick up on that as opposed to, yeah, but they'll quit drinking for me or they just haven't settled down yet. The narcissist will usually tell on themselves. If you start a relationship, it's good to start out as friends. That way there's uh, a, a true friendship. And if you give it time, you can see if they're showing up for you, if they're listening to you. But a narcissist, it, it takes so much time. It can take years or decades to really see their true colors because we're so involved so wanting it to work out, so wanting it to get back to what it was. And if you look across the board, it's the same cycle. You can look at the different YouTube channels and you will see this pattern over and over again. And I also want you guys to be careful on what your person is. Uh, a lot of us like to diagnose this as a narcissist somebody with narcissistic personality disorder. I came across a YouTube channel and I was reading some of the comments and the guy said that uh, his ex really didn't blink. And that's more of a like sociopathic type trait. And that can be even more dangerous. So let me know if you guys would like to know more about the different mental illnesses because this person uh, might have just had low self-esteem or they might have been avoidant or maybe we might misinterpret whether it's autistic or ADHD or different little things that are going on with people. Sometimes it's anxiety or depression. But with all the lies, all the deceit, all the future faking, so many lives are destroyed. And, you know, the narcissist loves to try to possibly get you pregnant or uh, trap you by getting pregnant that it is so selfish that 
All they want is what they want. Sometimes too, uh, females may purposely get pregnant so they can get your money. So be cautious with the people that you invest in. The narcissist sometimes will give you an engagement, engagement ring, promise you forever. And it's sad that, you know, you wait maybe a year engaged, two, three, four years, and they don't follow through. It's interesting that 25% of um, engagements fail. They don't go through to marriage. And I see um, 25% of engagements don't come to fruition. That's also pretty much in line with how many narcissists are out there. Now, if you look, it's like one to 6% chance of somebody being uh, with NPD. However, they don't go to counseling. They don't get diagnosed. If they do go to counseling, they lie. So they're not going to get diagnosed. And it's probably about 20, 25% of people in the United States are at least high on the narcissistic scale. Society is becoming a a dog eat dog world. And we have to protect ourselves. And with the, 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 the shift, how sometimes we can either become close to borderline or narcissistic because of the abuse that we went through to where we're trying to survive, that it's snowballing out of control. And I'm here to help you heal that if you're an empath, you want to stay stay true to yourself. I see a lot of people, they want revenge on the narcissist. That's not going to take away the pain. It's probably going to add to it to where now you feel that you've done something wrong that you handle things the wrong way, or I didn't realize I was that spiteful. So getting revenge is not going to heal the pain. Don't risk criminal charges. Don't risk ruining your reputation over somebody who doesn't give two craps. And it's hard when you love the person, but the person that you loved isn't who they said they were. You fell in love with somebody you thought was loyal, faithful, caring, giving. What you fell in love with, they say, was your reflection of yourself. You felt alive. You felt yourself because that was the mirror. But a healthy relationship isn't a mirror. A healthy relationship is two people seeing each other for who they are. And loving it. But when you looked into the narcissist. All that was there was you. And eventually. The narcissist started to resent that. Because they weren't living their life. They felt empty. And it's not that you didn't give them everything. It's just. This emptiness. Because they don't have the empathy. Humans are uh, meant to be social creatures. And the narcissist can be social, but it's not fulfilling to them. Because they're seeking a love that they don't know how how to recognize or accept. And they... They destroy relationships because of the deceit. And it's very hard for them because that's their survival technique to give up what they're used to so they get their way. They're not concerned about other people getting their way. In the beginning, they play the game. Then they get tired of the game and they just want what they want. One-on-ones are available. Topic requests are welcome. But the future faking that the narcissist will do, you know, how long are you going to wait? 
you invest time in someone and you know let me know some of the red flags you're seeing sometimes people are hard to read sometimes we misinterpret things but somebody who is a narcissist will have patterns and the patterns are what are going to what's going to let you know who they truly are if it's a one time thing that's different or if it only happens every 2 years that's different but a pattern and especially the severity of what they're doing is it just a small little white lie or are they cheating are they uh stealing from you and trying to take all they can so i'm here to help you protect yourself to understand narcissism and other mental illnesses and to keep your mental health in check